Nowadays, many young couples consider preconception screening, but if, like me, you discover later on that your children have fragile X syndrome, the reality is devastating, and possibly you know nothing about fragile X. So what does one do next? I think it's important for families to find a, a good physician who's knowledgeable about Fragile X and can talk to them about the variety of interventions that are available. So there's uh, interventions that have to do with therapy, like speech and language therapy, occupational therapy, physical therapy, and that is particularly important for the younger children. Also, behavioral interventionists who can help with behavior problems, but there's also medications that can be very helpful for kids with Fragile X syndrome. And the newer targeted treatments are able to reverse some of the neurobiological abnormalities, and they can make a huge difference in behavior. And uh, we're very hopeful that they'll make a difference in cognitive development for those with Fragile X. So in general, having a child with Fragile X syndrome, I think, is a very hopeful diagnosis just because there's so many new treatments that are being studied and, and utilized for treating children. So given that there's a feeling of guilt and blame, what, else, what advice would you give parents? Because quite often their relationship can be under strain. So... There are many genes, both good and bad, that we pass on to our children. There's at least six to 10 recessive genes that sometimes can cause problems in the development of children. Uh, some come from the mother, some come from the father. Um, Fragile X is just one that expands when it's passed on by the mother. But she may have gotten the gene from her father so um, I think if a family is having great strife in um, blaming each other, I think it's very helpful for them to get therapy because the parents have to work together for the betterment of their child. So counseling, you know, that can help a significant conflict that occurs in, in, between the parents, I think can oftentimes be resolved in a very positive way. Uh, with a therapist who can help them with their conflicts. And so the next question is schooling. And in your experience, do children do better when they're in a satellite or special class or a mainstream class? So um, that depends on the level of functioning of the child. I would say for the majority of kids with Fragile X, particularly young kids, they do better in a mainstream classroom. Sometimes their behavior requires an aid to work with them uh, on a one-to-one -one basis, or perhaps an aid can be utilized to work with two or three kids in a classroom that may be having some problems in keeping up with the regular classroom. But usually a mainstream works very well because the child with Fragile X tends to imitate other kids in the classroom. And if he's in a, he or she is in a classroom with normal kids, they will imitate normal behavior and want to be part of, you know, the, the normal mainstream. And as long as their behavior allows the mainstreaming, then they do quite well. So that leads on to puberty, and sometimes this is a very tricky time because the mood swings and antisocial behavior can be very tricky and difficult. Yeah. Anything specific? <laughs> <laughs> so uh, some boys in particular with Fragile X syndrome, um, with puberty, there's an increase in testosterone, and sometimes that can lead to more aggressive behavior, but not always. There's many kids that uh, don't have any aggression at all. Um, some kids that have hitting or more aggressive behavior, particularly towards mothers, most of the aggression is towards mothers, not towards fathers, because mothers uh, tend to allow it, and they're also the closest to the child. So the child tends to aggress towards the mother, whereas the father oftentimes is much more stern towards the child. Um, so aggression can be more of a problem in adolescence. 
Um, and then you definitely need the help of a behavior intervention person to lower aggression. Oftentimes different medications can help. But many kids with Fragile X can have these outbursts of behavior that come out of the blue and it has to do with the mood instability. There's medications that can definitely help with this. Um, and we usually recommend that combined with behavioral interventions. So then the next stage, um, sex. How do we tackle this issue with our young adults? Yes, so sexuality, yes. counseling is very important. Some families feel comfortable in doing this. Other families would like a therapist to do this. And there are many psychologists that are quite knowledgeable in educating individuals about sexuality issues. Um, you know, with visuals and, um, you know, learning how to use condoms. Many individuals with Fragile X syndrome are sexually active. Others are not, and it depends on the level of intellectual ability. Um, and there are therapists uh, who have a lot of expertise in this area. And they also talk about what's appropriate in terms of sexual acting out, like masturbating. Uh, when you do it, and you do it in the privacy of your room and not in public. Um, and um, uh, this can be uh, taught to uh, the individuals. Um, and many have sexual relationships, develop girlfriends and boyfriends, and others and may not. Yeah, and successfully. Good. Now the next thing is living independently. Is it a possibility? And do Fragile X adults flourish in group homes or are they better on their own? So um, a lot depends on the intellectual level of the individual. Mm -hmm. I have many, many patients that live independently or live with a roommate. Sometimes it may be a sibling or sometimes it may be with a good friend or, or maybe it's with a girlfriend or a boyfriend. Um, but that is often um, a real good option for many. Um, there are adult educational programs where individuals can learn how to live independently, how to shop, how to handle the laundry, laundry, how to handle, you know, cooking and washing dishes and doing all the things you need to do so for living so independently. Yeah. yeah. And so then the next question is the aging parents. So a fragile X adults that may not be able to live on their own or the parents have not wanted to let them go. Um, this is the next problem. Yes. Well, for many aging adults, aging adult parents of individuals with fragile X, having a fragile X um, younger adult in the household um, many families find that extremely helpful because oftentimes the Fragile X adult is taking care of an aging parent um, and they do quite well with that. Um, I know many uh, Fragile X adult individuals, males and females, who have taken care of an aging parent or grandparent. Uh, some actually are trained in doing that as a job in an aging um, setting for uh, older adults. And that's, you know, um, uh, training for how to um, be good company, how to entertain, how to keep aging adults busy. So many families find that having their adult Fragile X child in the household while they're aging is quite helpful. It's not a problem, but quite helpful to them. So do you ever find that the characteristics of Fragile X alter over time? Do the patients become more adaptive or maybe the people around them become more adaptive? Yes, I think, I think individuals with Fragile X do change over time. Um, issues like aggression, which can be a problem for maybe about 30 to 40 percent, usually that tends to go down after adolescence or later on in the 20s, so it oftentimes is not a problem 
in the 30s and 40s and 50s. Um, they oftentimes calm down, learn how to carry out a job, um, often enjoy their work uh, that they do during their adult life. Um, uh, sometimes uh, the higher functioning uh, males and many of the females uh, are married. Um, it is difficult if they start a family themselves, although I've seen that be successful on occasion. Um, I think with better uh, targeted treatments that can be utilized even before adulthood, um, that may make a real difference in how they um, start a family or have a married life. I think that'll be more common as we develop better treatments for Fragile X Syndrome. So the outlook doesn't need to be so bleak for people discovering their children are Fragile X then? No, I think the outcome uh, should be very positive. I think among neurodevelopmental disorders, Fragile X is one of the best disorders to have because it's really leading the way for targeted treatments for other neurodevelopmental disorders. Thank you, Randy.